looking back at her social circles that I saw and the men who she dated and married, certainly, you know, I think there was an affinity towards white privilege, if you want to call it that. So, you know, playing, in my opinion, playing the race card um, seems opportunistic Mm. on the grounds that it was never a focal part of her identity, never on the TIG that I saw, never in her social circles. She never belonged to a black sorority in school. Um, or You know, the schools that she went to were very eclectic and diverse. And that was great. But that being said, if you look at who she married and surrounded herself with, um, I don't feel that she has license to play the race card. So, yeah, Peter, okay. can you just explain where your case is at now? Okay. Well, in the trial court, we had uh, a, a district court judge that decided on the motion to dismiss that was raised by Meghan Markle. And the motion to dismiss basically was saying, well, if you look at this comment and you look at this comment and you look at this comment, they all either mean nothing or their opinion or whatever. And uh, and so the judge basically agreed with them and threw the case out. When then we filed the notice of appeal. And at this point, our brief has been filed and the uh and Meghan Markle's brief has been filed and now we just have to file our reply brief and then the case will be getting ready for oral argument and a decision but I would want to point out you know what I, what am I talking about in terms of these different things that were said so it uh, would it be all right if I explain that to you now please okay so just to give a for instance okay I remember, by the way, Shapiro in the OJ trial. I had those glasses and said, I can't read with them. I can't. <laughs> okay, so if we just kind of take a look, okay. So it's a, one of the things she said is, you don't know me. Betrayal comes from somebody that you have a relationship with. So really, how is that all by itself? How is that defamation? It's not. All by itself, It it just is a statement. It doesn't say... You know, it doesn't say Samantha Markle is dishonest. Samantha Markle is a, an opportunist. Samantha Markle is this or that. It's basically just saying these these words. You don't know me. Betrayal comes from somebody you have a relationship with. Or the next one, I grew up as an only child and I wish I had siblings. Or where she then said that uh, she was, uh, It's it's been at least 18, 19 years ago since she saw Samantha, which wasn't true. And 10 years before that, which wasn't true. And then also Samantha changed her name back to Markle when Meghan started dating Prince Harry. That's the way that Samantha, not Samantha, that uh, Meghan, Meghan Markle. But but Meghan Markle, in putting it that way, was not being honest because the actual quote was, uh, Samantha changed her surname back to Markle only when Markle started dating Prince Harry. So when I started dating Prince Harry was what she said. So, you know, the fact is, if you take them all by themselves, they're really meaningless. But when you put them all together, which they're, they are, they're said together, and you put them all together, it's basically making Samantha Markle look like she's some kind of a stranger to the, to her who is now trying to cash in on this whole thing because Samantha wrote a book and the book wasn't really about her sister, but the title kind of used the, the word, uh, you know, pushy sister. And so, uh, so without ever reading the book, Megan Markle decided I'm going to destroy that book. Nobody's going to read it because I'm going to destroy Samantha's reputation in the, in, in the media. But, you know, when you're talking about somebody that, is at that time dating Prince Harry and so on. You're talking about someone who, you know, a normal person would say something like that, even if they could get it in the newspaper, maybe it's a little bit of a, a, a negative thing to somebody. But when you have millions of people that are reading these things or hearing these things from Meghan Markle, it becomes so much worse. And it did become so much worse in the Netflix series that she did because there she had this, Christopher Bo- uh, Boozy. Boozy, yes. Yes. 
uh, which, which uh, is, you know, I don't, I don't really want to tell you what I think about Christopher Boosie. <laughs> Let's just say it would have to nothing. be censored. I feel exactly the same, Peter. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I have nothing good to say about that person, but you know, he had terrible things to say. I mean, that, the things that he said, he basically called. You know, I, I, I've seen this actually. This, these very comments. Uh, looked at by uh, a, another commentator recently who was saying this is actually showing racism against white women and and, and when you think about it it really is you know Christopher Boozy's um, is, uh, is a, a, a black individual uh, I don't think it matters what he did is just despicable no matter what kind of color he is uh, but the fact of the matter is that these things that he said, um, uh, where he he basically uh, is saying things like, uh, oh, God. this is not your everyday trolling. It's insane. And it was done by people who are not the typical uh unique trolls these are housewives these are middle-aged caucasian women okay so it, there's no question he's pointing out that group and then he basically says samantha markle was part of the group that was point putting out this information well in other words okay if you have a group you know like if you have a group of pe people that put up confederate flags some of them may be racist, some of them may not be racist. And there's case law that basically says you, you can't include everybody in a group. But if the group is defined as to everybody that puts up Confederate flags, the one thing you know is they all are putting up Confederate flags as that's the defining factor that puts them in the group. So here he's saying that Samantha Markle put out this information because he she belongs to a group of people who put out this information that means that she herself puts out different this information. Mm. So she's accusing her of being a liar, being dishonest, because the one thing we know about this information is it's not true. Okay. Uh, and, and just be just before you go on, Sam, do yeah. you feel like Megan and her Sussex squad trolls like mm. Christopher Boozy were using anti white racism against you? Well, I, I do. Any suggestion that I could or would ever be part of a hate group, and that was the overtone and implication. It was pretty uh, clear. I believe that was the motive. Mm. Um, is it will incite a lot of violence. So certainly, and certainly, it's baseless. I mean, like like Peter said, you know, if I, I was online. Um, defending my dad and saying, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. That doesn't make me part of the rest of the population, millions of people around the world who are having their own opinions and who are saying things because of controversial headlines, because they were forming an opinion based on observable actions. But that doesn't make me part of their group. I'm mm. a family member and we had our own opinions, uh, valid, unique, separate, from the opinions of the public. And if based on observable actions, sometimes those opinions intersected. As a family member, I certainly felt like it was my right under the constitution to express that and express what I disagreed with. That just, doesn't make me a basher. It doesn't make me the leader of a hate group no, of because it, it had nothing to it had nothing to do with race. So he's applying labels that are wholly inaccurate and I think that's actionable. And just and to clarify, Sam, growing yeah. up, Megan identified as Caucasian, didn't she? Or at least on her acting form, she was identifying as Caucasian. Correct. And reportedly on her driver's license. And, you know, I would say looking back at her social circles that I saw and the men who she dated and married, Certainly, it, you know, I think there was an affinity towards white privilege, if you want to call it that. So, you know, playing, in my opinion, playing the race card um, seems opportunistic mm. on the grounds that it was never 
a focal part of her identity, never on the TIG that I saw, never in her social circles. She never belonged to a black sorority in school. Um, or, you know, the schools that she went to were very eclectic and diverse. And that was great. But that being said, if you look at who she married and surrounded herself with, um, I don't feel that she has license to play the race card. Personal no, opinion. Indeed. Indeed. So, so, yeah. so, so, Peter, back to the case. Are you confident that now this democratic judge is out the way who seemed to me to be completely in megan's camp for political reasons do you feel more confident now that it's in the appeal court I feel i'm gonna get a fair shake now i don't want to say that this judge acted out of bias you know, no. just because she was uh, appointed by no you can't uh, say that i can Barack say that <laughs> <laughs> you know you know there are there are appointees uh on the bench that were appointed by obama who are just wonderful fair judges and so to uh to uh smear her with an unfair brush and saying that this is what motivated her to make the decision she made uh i i i can't say that in all fairness i can say it it may uh, but but I, the, now I'm going to be in front of a panel of three judges in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And it's very possible that I'm going to get three more Democrat judges or I'm going to get three Republican judges or I'm going to get a mix in most likelihood, at the greatest likelihood. And I, I, I think that these judges are the, at that point, they, these are learned men and women who have achieved an epitome of success, okay? To be a judge on a court that's just below the level of the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, you've got to be somebody. And, and you know, as long, you know, I don't know who's been appointed in the last three and a half years. Uh, the Biden appointees, I've seen some of them, some of them worry me, some of them are probably great. Uh, but, uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, I think I think we'll have a fair shot uh, going forward, and we'll see see what happens. I just hope for the and sake. Will Meghan Markle have to take the stand? Not in the appeal. The appeal is based entirely on the record of what was said, and this this was the dismissal of a complaint that is deemed to be true on all of the allegations in it, and we've got. All of these things that were said, and either you know the court of appeals is going to do what our, our 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 trial court judge did, and do what the defense wanted, what Meghan Markle wanted, and look at each one individually. Uh, I mean, even you know, if we were to take every word that I'm saying here today individually, each it doesn't mean anything. It's when you combine words and you combine thoughts. I mean that's you know thought thoughts are 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 basically how do we think we think in terms of concepts okay if you want to think of a cup of tea that's a concept and we have words that make that up and the most dangerous part of Meghan Markle isn't what Meghan Markle has done to her sister and her father what and the royal family for goodness sakes mm. The, the most horrific part of Meghan Markle is what would possibly come about in the event that the globalists should walk away with this election like they did the last one. Because quite frankly, that would probably put her in a position of some power. Yeah, which well, is she wants political power, doesn't right. she? Yes, that's what she she longs for. You know, these folk don't don't get get it wrong. I mean, you know, here they are, the worst offenders that I've ever seen in terms of of of, of being able to destroy somebody on the internet because they've got the Sussex Squad, which you have personal. Uh, oh, you have I know all about it. But, oh my God, they are they are absolutely horrendous. And you have them basically controlling the, the worst abuse on the internet as they go around yeah. pretending that what, what they want to do is stop all kinds of activity 
and they have never that. once called out the Sussex squad. Never once. They have never once said, do not troll in our name. In fact, the honorary leader of the Sussex squad, the bloke who you mentioned, Christopher Boozy, was actually given the big platform on their Netflix show. And Sam, look, Peter's talking about this from a legal perspective, but from a personal perspective, mm-hmm. I know this has caused you a huge amount of pain, hasn't it? You feel like Megan did all she could to degrade you, to discredit you, to effectively ruin your future earning opportunities. And it's taken a huge toll. Exactly. Um, more than five, six years of my life. I mean, there was a point when I couldn't go out of the house because people were reading tabloids that were driven by paid PR, making me out to look like a monster. And so my reputation as a mental health counselor, my degree, um, my personal friendships, neighborhoods, so any social activity, I became really reclusive because people would judge me. And I heard whisperings from next door neighbors based on what they heard, you know, and, and I, it was really a difficult way to live because of social labels that were driven by, in my opinion, a corrupt agenda, malicious and paid. And I didn't have the power to fight that. So it felt like no matter what I say, nobody's going to listen to me because all they see is, you know, everything that's going out on, you know, up in the ether and cyberspace uh, where all the money's floating around and where the control really happens. And, um, and it was very real, you know, it reminded me of the wizard of Oz, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. There was somebody behind the curtain creating the big cloud of smoke that was overwhelming. And that's all people really saw. And that's what they believed. And it took such a toll on you. And I always need to remind people because for some reason at the moment, there is a particularly vicious streak out there of nastiness towards the Markle family online. Mm -hmm. And I really have to stress to everyone that I have known Samantha now since before the wedding. And everything that Samantha warned of has come true. So actually, if the royal family had listened to Samantha, if Harry had listened to Samantha, they would have known what was coming. And this particularly vicious streak online at the moment towards the Markle family really has to stop because it is based on lies. You're buying into a Sussex Squad narrative and it is really, really bad. So I just wanted to say that. Peter, can I just ask you a little bit? I I mean, look, for people who don't know, we obviously discussed it in our last... Oh, sorry, you come in, Peter. Yeah, yeah, I just want to comment. Uh, uh, you know, th- what Samantha did stress are all the death threats mm-hmm. and the fact that it ruined her profession. She's a counselor that can no longer counsel. So, you know, she her her career is destroyed, her 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 safety is at risk, and and you know, there's there's a lot to be said about these because these death threats aren't just little things. They're very realistic. Mm-hmm. And very no, frank, I get that. No, 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 they very much are. Now, Peter, can I just talk a little bit about the political situation? Because some people will not know if they didn't watch our previous interview, which I do recommend people check out on my YouTube page. But you are obviously close friends uh, with Donald Trump. You guys go way back. And you talk about the threat of the globalists winning the election in the US, which is obviously a real concern. But can we just have hope for a moment that Trump wins. What happens then to Harry and Meghan? Is Harry's citizenship under threat because he admitted to illegal drug use in his autobiography spare, for example, because Trump in the last few months has not ruled out potentially deporting Harry? Right. I know about it. I've never discussed this with with Donald Trump. When when I talk with Donald Trump, I talk about what Donald Trump wants to talk about. Yes. I, I don't uh I don't decide to change the agenda to, to what I want to talk about because uh, I'm just privileged to be able to speak to him from time to time. Uh yeah, the, but... what's that? No, go ahead, sorry. Okay. So uh I mean, yes, I mean we've known each other for sixty three years since we're fifteen years old. So <laughs> There's a certain love there uh, that you would have to uh, somebody who you were close friends with in high school. Uh, and we were we were very close in high school in our, our senior year. Uh, that's that 
that's when he was my captain of Company A, and he made me his uh, first platoon sergeant. And uh, and I I did I did a good job. I never got fired. Let's put it that way. Uh, although the platoon sergeant for, for the second platoon got uh, <laughs> fired repeatedly, we couldn't find the right guy. So uh, you know, so yes, it's been a it's been many years and 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 very good good feelings and a, a good rapport. I do I do think we have it though. Um, you know, you got to remember one thing. E even though there are millions and millions of votes being manufactured, perhaps uh in favor of kamala harris uh those count only for one vote in other words it's a vote that goes into kamala's column but the the votes that donald trump is getting like maybe 10 million from robert kennedy maybe another 20 mm -hmm. million from other sources because the the the, the black population the latino population population of women in america are certainly coming because they're becoming more aware of what's really mm -hmm. going on here and so those count as two in a sense because not only does it go into donald trump's category as another vote but it comes out of kamala harris's so those votes are are twice as impactful and i think we're going to be able to do it i think we're going to be too big to rig there's going to be such turnout because Donald Trump is loved by so many people. Come on. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. there's so much at stake. There is so yeah. much at stake. Uh, Samantha, I just want to ask you, because we haven't spoken since the, well, we haven't spoken publicly since the entire Hollywood media establishment, barring a couple, Vanity Fair, Town and Country, People, Us Weekly, have turned. Oh, Meghan Markle, this is an extraordinary development. I mean, for a mm -hmm. long time, these publications were all against you and they were effectively doing Meghan's propaganda. And there has been a complete 180 based on the shocking reports in The Hollywood Reporter revealing Meghan's mm -hmm. treatment of staff, describing her as a, a dictator in high heels. Then The Daily Beast describing her as a psycho... I mean, what has happened, Sam? This is a huge turnaround. Even the Daily Mail, which had been pretty positive over the past few months, reporting over the weekend, Harry and Meghan's missing millions. Archwell Foundation didn't declare $4 million on latest tax return as all eyes turned to Sussex's upcoming declaration with questions over where money went. So what has happened, Sam, in your opinion, for the Hollywood media, which was so backing the Sussexes for such a long time, to turn on Megan in this way? What's changed? Well, in my opinion, like the old saying, the cream always rises to the top. And even Hollywood, who were high on this royal fantasy in the beginning and wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt, I think, coupled with a lot of paid PR that I think may be waning. You know, you can only afford to have people cover yourself so much and write so many articles that look favorable in the face of actions that are not and so i think people were observing that wait a minute this is you know it, it seems like it would be exhaustive for them but after a while after burning x amount of bridges you know people wanted people want i think in hollywood to be treated with dignity respect and trust is an important thing and in absence of all of those things it doesn't seem sensible that they, they would still be inclined to uh, put out positive PR. It seems like the truth has to come out. Enough was enough. And that's what, you know, I, that's what I think happened. But Peter, um, we, oh, sorry, you go, Sam. Um, Finish your point, sorry. No, and I wanted to bring up something else because you were talking about Harry and his immigration status. Mm -hmm. I think this is really important because I'm a constitutionalist. It's not just the immigration issue. It's the fact that on continuum, since congressmen like Jason Smith and others had sent letters to Queen Elizabeth asking that their titles be stripped, it is a violation of Article 1, Section 9 of the United States Constitution to have royal titles interfering in American politics, whether it was about, you know, um, leave of absence or women's issues or um, mental health or especially now censorship and misinformation. 
for those two to get on stages using their titles um, creates a false elevated, um, a, 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 an elevated perception of them against average American citizens. It carries the weight of them somehow being more credible and special. So when they say these things, they dabble in politics. And certainly when they're talking about misinformation and censorship, which in my opinion, they are the purveyors of misinformation. Right. Um, it, 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 it has it has cloud. It, it does bring a false influence and it needs to be stopped. The Constitution says no. So um, I don't think if, you know, if Democrats uh, don't take office again, I think that's going to have to be addressed. Mm. And several congressmen have already brought it to the table. Well, because Peter, Harry and Meghan are not even hiding their globalist connections. I mean, look at this picture, for example, uh, from New York. There's Harry alongside Hillary Clinton, uh, Dr. Tedros from the World Health Organization, who did so many terrible things over the COVID pandemic. He was Mm -hmm. with him earlier in the week in New York. Uh, so, So they're not hiding that they are part of this globalist elite. But 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 what is glaring to me, and, mm. and I think the left are starting to question this to get back to the Hollywood thing, is that they are out there preaching about online bullying. Let's oh, look no. at the Sussex Squad, Christopher Boozy, KPR. Oh, no. They are out there suggesting that they are the, you know, the know-it-alls of what constitutes misinformation and disinformation. Um in my opinion, they're not credible to do that because they put out so much misinformation and disinformation that has been deleterious to so many. So the hypocrisy is terrible, but I don't feel that they're qualified. Neither of them has been elected. Neither has uh, obtained a law degree or run for councilwoman or congressman or senator. And they certainly weren't given license by the royal family to be on the global stage talking about these global issues. So I don't see why any globalist would be taking them serious, seriously. If I were one of them at the WEF, I'd be looking at that going, wait a minute, uh, and you're who? How are yeah. you qualified to be here? So my opinion, uh, yeah. and I think, I think it's a factor. Do you agree, Peter? Not entirely. I hate to disagree with Samantha, <laughs> but I do. Explain. In this because Harry is one of 16 governors in the Aspen Institute, which is in charge of the basically determining for us what is disinformation and misinformation on the internet. So he's somehow, I mean, how do these people wangle their way into these kinds of positions? I have no idea because Samantha is right about the fact that they, you know, who are they? You know, one guy is born with some title and probably inadequately educated and inadequately, you know, whatever. This guy is not really exactly, you know, a performer. I wouldn't trust him to be a plumber in my house. Not that there's anything wrong with plumbers, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I I have a lot more respect for a guy that does an honest job during the day than I do for this entitled person that has no capabilities that we know of, of doing anything uh, uh, other than maybe shooting some people. Uh, and yeah. the thing is he seems to be having let's just be honest about this a serious midlife crisis lots of rumors about the state mm-hmm. of his marriage to your sister sam and then i wanted to show you this extraordinary moment in new york over the weekend when he arrives at a tattoo parlor with all of his security <laughs> knowing full well that the paparazzi are there. Watch this. And sure enough, just as he wanted, Media hysteria mm-hmm. ensues, and Josh Lord from the Tattoo Parlor East Side Inc. starts speaking publicly. Cringe, watch this. Two, well, nothing, of course. Nothing. 
Absolutely. So you heard he stopped by here. Oh, yeah. And so he stopped was for free. over an hour. So oh, cool. I mean, what was he like just in the, in the tattoo parlor? The truth is that I couldn't tell you anything about anybody who stopped by without their permission. So you can either confirm or deny anything you say or ask about anybody who comes in. So officially, and of course, we would respect anybody's privacy in the exact same way. So, you know, uh, from everything that I've seen, it seems like a phenomenal fact. You, you, you said that uh, that you um, that you've tattooed a lot of celebrities. Lot of celebrities. Can you compare uh, the one what it would be like if he were here? I mean, how does he rank? I mean, do you, I, 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 I assume you're star I mean, how, I, how's I, that absolutely, different? I absolutely understand uh, the line of questioning, and I appreciate it. But of course, I could, could never actually say anything either way. I mean, Sam, come on! This is the ultimate midlife crisis. If you want to go and get a tattoo, Harry, you could do it in Montecito and none of us would know about it. So he wants us all to what? know, I'm having this reawakening, my marriage is in trouble, so I'm gonna go <laughs> and get a tattoo. Please, how embarrassing is that? Somebody on X did a fabulous, uh, <laughs> they did a meme and what, so the suggestion was that he had just come out of the tattoo parlor. This is comedy, by the way. And the tattoo read Markled across his chest now this was the funniest <laughs> meme i had seen so whoever did it bravo uh but yeah it was great <laughs> do, 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 and, and then there was also this appearance on jimmy fallon the tonight show totally bizarre mm -hmm. because he was swearing like a little kid he almost punched someone and we're meant to think that this is sort of royally appropriate behavior of course jimmy fallon was delighted because he's got a member of the royal family someone who remains in the line of succession uh pumping up his halloween experience watch this interview you got some nightmares going on as Get ready for what, uh, tonight Mares was so fun, we just did it with Prince Harry. Um, it was insane. Uh, the best part, we did it with Prince Harry and uh, these, the, the actors dressed as the zombies at the end, both have, with security cameras around them and they have a freak out. And the one zombie goes, oh my gosh. He goes, watch, he goes, that was Prince Harry. And the other zombie's like, and they start doing this. It steals the show, it's super fun. He was a great guest, totally game for it. It's scary, but it's fun. I mean, Peter. He is, whatever you think about Harry, he is now doing so much damage, isn't he, to the royal family? Isn't it time for King Charles to just say, your titles are gone, you've got to be gone from the line of succession because this is embarrassing? Well, to from your lips to God's ear, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, you know, I'm looking at it subjectively. I'm looking at, but at the same time, I'm pretty objective about the things I do. I have to take all kinds of emotional issues and present them in objective ways before courts of law, before juries or before judges. Sometimes there's things that you could really stop yourself from crying just to be able to deal with it. And so I, I'm looking at it objectively with the the eyes of a courtroom lawyer. Uh, I just can't understand how it is that the that that uh, that King Charles hasn't done this already. Uh, and when he passes, perhaps uh, his uh, his older son will have the the, uh, the the intestinal fortitude to do what needs to be done here. This guy shouldn't be in the line of, of, of uh, succession. He, I mean, think mm -hmm. about it for a second. He's how much can you trust these people? I mean, they, you, 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 as I said, you know when she's lying because her lips are moving. You know, she she lives in in complete fantasy. She'll say anything to promote herself and say the opposite the next day. She lives this life of of deceit. Uh, and she doesn't mind taking other people down with her. So, I mean, when you take a look at, at, at what these people are, I think it's actually even dangerous. I mean, we know that nobody's safe anymore. We know that Donald Trump isn't safe. We, we've seen that assassination attempt, uh, two attempts, and who knows what else hasn't, hasn't come to the surface. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, we, we, why would the royal family consider itself safe enough 
you know, uh, you know, somebody, uh, I think said one plane crash would take care of the whole thing and make Harry King. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. That they which would is the huge concern, which is the huge concern. I totally agree. But Sam, the positive thing, let's end on a positive mm -hmm. note is that even the woke leftist Hollywood media is working your sister out. And so I know it's taken a long time for you to get there, but at least people are now starting to realize that everything you were saying was true. Well, I, and I think Harry, you know, similarly with Harry, like here's the, here's the thing about the false air that comes with a title. The Jimmy Fallon thing was a prime example. You know, just because someone's a prince, people will get flustered and, you know, so sensationalistic. But then people are looking at those behaviors that contradict what they think is humanitarian, diplomatic and right, whether you're on the left or the right politically. So it's nice to see that the woke are quote waking up, in my opinion. Indeed, indeed. Well, look, you know, I'm going to keep following your case. Uh, you've got one of the best lawyers in America behind you and Peter Tickton. So I hope that justice and also sanity prevails here. So good luck. You know, you've got my full support and I love having both of you on Outspoken. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate being here. And I know that Samantha does. So uh, thank you so much. for. Having and I'm so on. glad you got through the, uh, what was a pretty shocking looking storm in Florida over the weekend as well. I know storm. <laughs> does down what you've all gone through there. So, so thank you so much to Peter Tickton and Samantha Markle.